There has been a lot of buzz over the relatively new certification called CDSA, Cyber Defender Security Analyst provided by Hack the Box. Is it good? Should you take it? Let's talk about it. Before I begin, for those that don't know me, I've been in the cybersecurity industry for over five years now and specialized in security operations. I've been a tier one to three analyst and currently I am now a DFIR consultant. Now, why am I telling you this? Well, because I have some experience in the field, I will provide you with my thoughts at the end and won't hold anything back. Truth be told, I don't want you to waste your time on certifications or trainings that don't make any sense. I'll provide you with free alternatives at the end as well to help those that do not have the budget for this course or training. This certification is catered for those who want to become a SOC analyst. So what exactly does a SOC analyst do? In short, they make sense of data and paint a story to communicate the impact of a potential event or security incident to an organization. Now that you know what a SOC analyst does, let's jump into the certification. In order to attempt the certification, one must first finish the SOC analyst job role path. This path consists of 15 modules and we'll quickly go over them. Starting with the first one, incident handling process. I am extremely happy that they provide this in the beginning because it is extremely crucial for anyone working in a SOC know the incident handling process. Now, will you be the one handling the incidents? Probably not, especially if you are the junior SOC analyst. But if you do plan on transitioning down the line towards, say, an incident responder, you'll be happy that you learned this process. Module two is security monitoring and SIM fundamentals. This is probably one of the most important modules based on the content it provides. A SOC analyst's main responsibility is to monitor and utilize tools such as a SIM. But do keep in mind that a SIM is not mandatory. However, it is nice to have. It appears that it utilizes Elastic Stack as the SIM of choice, which a lot of organizations do use. They do touch on MITRE ATT&CK framework to allow students to understand the attacker's TTPs, tactics, techniques, and procedures. Module number three is Windows Event Logs and Finding Evil. This one is a mini module and understanding how to interpret Windows Event Logs and identify evil is honestly one of the skills that will separate you from the others. Unfortunately, not many can interpret these logs and fall into the trap of <laughs> copy and pasting from other analysts, or copying from previous similar tickets and hope for the best. Module number four is introduction to threat hunting and hunting with Elastic. The second mini module that will introduce you to threat hunting in Elastic. Once you learn how to threat hunt, it doesn't really matter which product you use, such as Elastic or Splunk or even Sentinel, because the threat hunting methodology will still apply and just querying the data will be a little different. Lastly, it will provide students with the opportunity to interpret a threat intel report. Module number five is understanding log sources and investigating with Splunk. The third mini module. This will introduce you to Splunk, which is another popular tool and personally my favorite. Students will learn how to sift through various log sources to gain an understanding of what exists. Module number six, Windows attacks and defense. This part talks about a big portion of Active Directory, which is the heart in most organizations. Learning about attacks in Active Directory and how to defend against them is extremely valuable knowledge to obtain and should not be overlooked. Modules 7 and 8, Network Traffic Analysis. Learn about how to interpret network-related data and how to identify anomalies to reveal suspicious activities. Students will get to learn topics such as TCP dump and Wireshark. Module 9 is working with IDS slash IPS. Students get to learn about Suricata, Snort, and Zeek, and will cover rule development. In the real world, you are not likely to be the one creating the rules, but it is good to know. Module 10 is Introduction to Malware Analysis. This will focus on Windows-based threats and will cover both static and dynamic analysis. Students get to dive into real-world malware such as WannaCry, and in a SOC environment, it is not often an analyst will get to play with malware. In fact, many simply use a cloud sandbox and use that instead. But trust me when I say this, knowing how to perform basic static and dynamic analysis is incredibly useful. Module 11, 
JavaScript deobfuscation. This will guide you through the fundamentals of JavaScript deobfuscation. There will be times when investigating phishing emails or come across sites that will have obfuscated malicious JavaScript embedded into them. So learning how to deobfuscate these will be extremely beneficial for students. Module number 12, Yara and Sigma for SOC analysts. Students will learn how to create both Yara and Sigma rules. Where Sigma is extremely useful when it comes to creating use cases or querying for suspicious activity. As for Yara, although nice, a SOC analyst will likely not do too much with Yara. I see this more catered towards DFIR analysts. Module 13, Introduction to Digital Forensics. Students will learn core forensic concepts and tools such as FTK Imager, Cape, Velociraptor, and Volatility. Personally, this seems to be a filler module, especially when it comes to SOC analysts. This is because SOC analysts, especially juniors, are not expected to use these tools or even perform forensics, as this can be an extremely sensitive area. I personally would not ask a junior analyst to perform forensics, hence why I say this is a filler module. But since it is being offered, it is a nice bonus to have and understand the concepts. Module 14, Detecting Windows Attacks with Splunk. I see the section combining both modules 5 and 6, where students will sift through Windows event data using Splunk to identify attacks towards Active Directory. If you recall, I mentioned that Active Directory is the heart of many organizations, so this module, if done right, is as real as it gets. Module 15, Security Incident Reporting. The last mini module for this SOC analyst job path. This module ensures students are documenting security incidents, which is extremely important, with utmost accuracy and professionalism. I cannot state this enough. Unfortunately, many SOC analysts are terrible at documenting both escalations to a client or even standard operation procedures aka SOPs. As a SOC analyst, scratch that. As every role in cybersecurity, you must be able to document and if you can create outstanding documentation, that will quickly set you apart. So those are the 15 modules for the SOC analyst job role path. And if you complete all 15, you can then tackle the CDSA certification. If you are a student or a professional that wants to transition into cybersecurity, I want you to know that I offer free mentorship on my site with no strings attached. On there, you will also see products that I've personally created in which you can download to help guide you along this journey. These products include resume and cover letter templates, bookmarks, a one-year roadmap on how to get started in cybersecurity, and a list of interview questions to help you in your next interview. Also, as a sneak peek, I am in the process of creating a SOC course where there will be over 20 hands-on labs and multiple projects that you can put onto your resume. You can join the waitlist if you choose to do so. My mission here is to help you get to where you want to be. Although the price is quite affordable, there will be some students that are just not in the financial position to afford the course. And if you are in that position, I got you. Here are some free things that you can do to learn the same material for this course. I'll provide a link to videos that I've personally created in the description down below that should help with some of these. For module number one, you want to read the NIST framework for incident handling, SANS IR framework, and cyber kill chain. Or you can watch my video about frameworks. For module two, read up on MITRE ATT&CK and understand that, or you can watch my video about it. Then you want to spin up a community elk stack instance, or you can use HELK, which is a threat hunting elk stack created by the people at SANS. Module number three, you can learn a lot about Windows event logs by experimenting on your home lab or reading about them from sources such as Windows Security Log Encyclopedia or Archaeology. Module number four, when it comes to threat hunting process, you can find a lot of useful information on Google and one resource that will benefit you when it comes to threat intelligence is the DFIR report. Module number five, head over to Splunk's website and enroll in their free training to learn more about Splunk. Spin out Splunk and ingest logs from your machine onto your Splunk instant, and then play around. Module number six, Microsoft offers a lot of free training on Active Directory. Now where Microsoft teach you the attacks and defenses about Active Directory, 
<laughs> likely not, but it will at least provide you with the basic fundamentals on how Active Directory works. And then you can research what attacks exist and then learn to detect it. Module seven and eight, learn to spin up TCP dump and install Wireshark. Download PCATs from malware traffic analysis and play around with these tools. Module number nine, Snort, Suricata, and Zeke have great documentation on their site. And a lot of videos are on YouTube, such as mine, teaching you how to use these tools. Module 10, you can learn malware analysis on YouTube as there are a lot of great creators in this space, such as Josh Strachan. Module 11, there are a lot of free tools such as D4JS, which is a JavaScript deobfuscator and unpacker. However, to understand and interpret JavaScript, you can find videos on YouTube. Module 12, you can learn about Yara and Sigma on their website as they have pretty good documentation, especially for Sigma. Module 13, if you want to learn more about forensics, about DFIR is a great resource to do just that. Tools such as FTK Imager, Volatility, Cape, and Velociraptor are all free. And I have a video on Velociraptor to help you learn more about it. I'll be creating videos on all the other tools in the near future. Module 14, look into Boss of the Sock from Splunk. And then you wanna download the data set and ingest that into your Splunk instance. Then play around. Or you can use resources such as Let's Defend or Cyber Defenders and look for Splunk related labs. That way you don't have to spin up your own instance. Module 15, writing good documentation comes with experience. The more you do it, the better you become. I would recommend you look into videos or research on how to document. Create a blog and start documenting your labs and projects for practice. Drop a link and I'll be happy to review it. If you are looking for training that doesn't appear to have much of a video component tied to it and strictly labs, then this CDSA is great for you. I personally learned better watching someone go through it first and then work my way there. But all in all, CDSA appears to be pretty good. And based on the content, it could go hand in hand with CCD from Cyber Defenders. Although CDSA offers a lot of great modules, it is missing some core modules in my opinion, such as the cloud component and SOAR, as that is becoming more relevant in the SOC environments. But overall, this covers about 80% of it and should put you in a good spot if you take it. However, when it comes to the job market, similar to CCD or BTLO, CompTIA Security Plus is still the most attractive to obtain. Again, if you are like me and learn a lot better with watching someone first and then doing it, I am coming out with a SOC course that is pretty much similar to this, but including the missing pieces such as the cloud and SOAR. You can sign up for the waitlist in the description down below if you are interested. And that is it for the video and I hope you found that informative. Thank you so much for watching and remember to stay curious and do things differently.